In this video, I'm going to explain the skull histology and a few more questions that can come up in the exam. Starting by the skull bones, we have multiple bones forming the skull. And they are connected together by an irrigated structure that's called the suture. So about the first bone from the front is called the frontal bone. And this is the parietal bone. And of course, this is the mandible, quite easy, not part of the skull, but just to get rid of it. On the back, you have the occipital bone, number seven. All right? And uh, from the front, or the facial skeleton, you have two important bones and this includes the maxillary bone number five and the zygomatic bone number six okay and you can have a, inside the eye cavity you can find here this bone which is called the lacrimal bone uh, one of the big bones which is formed of multiple uh, small bones connected together already and um, uh, it's around two bones and also three processes is a temporal bone over this temporal bone has multiple processes as i mentioned one of these processes are the zygomatic process to this one and the styloid process like that and also the mastoid process you have mastoid styloid and also the zygomatic process of course because it's going to the zygomatic bone and then this yellow bone which is number three is called the greater wing of a sphenoid is part of this in terms of the question that can come up in the exam is the first one is about the therion and the therion is a structure that uh, connects between four different bones. This includes the frontal bone, the greater wing of the sphenoid, the squamous part of the temporal bone, which is right there, and also the parietal. So the therion has very important clinical significance, and this significance includes, it represents multiple approaches in brain surgery, and this includes the therional approach to be able to access the anterior circulation of the brain. It's also important because the middle meningeal artery runs on the inner surface of this therion and of course injury to the middle meningeal artery can lead to extradural hematoma. The other question that can be asked would be about the styloid process. The styloid process, as you can see, it's part of the temporal bone and it has multiple muscles attached to it and the muscles are styloglossus stylopharyngeus and the styloioid muscle. Of course, this is the external auditory meatus, this part. To be able to get a context about these questions, here are the mock tests for the head and neck anatomy, starting by the therion. What is the definition of the therion? It's the meeting between four different bones. This includes the frontal, parietal, temporal, and the greater wing sphenoid. The estimated location is usually two finger breadth above the zygomatic arch and a thumb breadth, breadth behind the frontal process of zygomatic bone. The clinical significance, uh, as I mentioned, the middle meningeal artery runs on the inner surface of the therion and its injury can lead to extra dural hematoma and it represents multiple brain approaches, specifically the therional approach to be able to reach the um, anterior circulation of the brain. The layers you go through while doing a therional approach or a uh, bare hole at the therion, this includes the skin, the connective tissue, the ponyrosis, and loose connective tissue as well. The difference here is the temporalis muscle, and then the pericranium. Basically, you will find all the other structures apart from the temporalis anywhere in the, in the scalp, but in this area, the temporal bone will be there. Stylo process and muscles attached to it, it's another question. And the muscles are stylohyoid, styloglossus, and the stylopharyngeus. To look in a little bit more detail about the bones of the skull, this is the sagittal section identifying the same bones that were identified in the other section. Starting by number one, this is the sphenoid bone with its smaller parts. So starting by, this is the greater wing of the sphenoid and this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid. As you can see here, this is an empty space. It's called the sphenoid air sinus and it's obviously inside the sphenoid bone. As you can see, the frontal bone is right there, and it has a frontal ear sinus in the center as well. Green is stayed the same, and this is the maxillary bone. Number three is the ethmoid bone. Five is called vomer, and six is called the palatine bone. Seven, of course, is the occipital bone, and eight is the temporal bone, and nine is the parietal bone.
As you can see here, there is a big impression of an artery on the inner side of the terion, and this is called the middle meningeal artery. As you can see here, this is the terion formed by four bones, parietal, frontal, greater ring of the sphenoid, and also the squamous part of the temporal bone. This is another view for the skull bones when we're looking from the inferior surface. And this is, of course, the teeth, and you can see um, the maxillary bone uh, still in the same color, connected with the zygomatic bone here, number two. And the um, number four will be the temporal bone with its different parts, which we mentioned multiple times. Of course, it has three processes. This is the zygomatic process, and here you have the mastoid process and the styloid process process and we mentioned the muscles attached to the styloid process as well this is the external auditory meatus and that's of course the mandibular fossa mandibular um the big bone in the inferior part of the skull will be the occipital bone as you can see here there are different parts of it this is the external occipital protuberance external occipital protuberance all right and this is foramen magnum and we're gonna explain this later on it's actually explained in the previous videos you can watch them for Raymond magnum and this is the condylar part or the occipital condyle or the condylar part of the occipital bone and that's the basilar part of the occipital bone there are lots of foramina here um, those will definitely be explained uh, later on or already explained in previous videos you can watch them uh, as you can see here this is the stylomastoid foramen right there, stylomastoid foramen. This is foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, just very close to it. That's foramen laterum, right there. And this is carotid canal, all right, carotid canal. And that's, of course, foramen laterum on the other 